In this video, we're going to talk about inverter heat pumps versus single stage heat pumps and what you should know in order to make the best decision and whether or not the inverter makes the most sense for your home or a single stage system. And we'll talk about kind of the ins and outs of what the differences are between an inverter system and a single stage system. And if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's a free way that you can show your support if you find this content helpful. So it's much appreciated. And that being said, before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button. It's a huge help with the algorithm and it is much appreciated. So first off, let's talk about the different types of heat pumps. Let's talk about what an inverter is, what a single stage heat pump is, what a two stage heat pump is, and when to use them. Now, the difference between them, basically a single stage or a two stage heat pump is what it sounds like, right? It has one stage or two stages of heating or cooling, which means that when it first kicks on, it's kicking on either at 100% capacity in the case of a single stage heat pump or at 50 50% capacity in the case of a two-stage heat pump. Now, the way that a two-stage heat pump works versus a single-stage heat pump is that when a two-stage heat pump first kicks on, it's at a lower capacity, and then after running for five or 10 minutes, if it hasn't satisfied temperature on the thermostat, it will then kick in to high gear or second stage, which would be 100% capacity, and it would run at 100% capacity until it satisfies temperature on the thermostat, in which case it then cycles off, and that's the end of the heating or cooling cycle, depending on whether or not it's calling for heating or cooling. Now the difference between a single stage or a two stage system and an inverter is that inverters function differently in that number one, they have an inverter board and two, they are essentially a variable speed product. So when you look at the difference between a modulating furnace and a single stage furnace, a modulating furnace ramps up and down from let's say 10% capacity up to 100% capacity. Whereas a single stage furnace is either at 0% capacity, it's off, or it's at 100% capacity meaning it's on. Now, an inverter functions similar to a modulating furnace in that it ramps up and down along a continuum. So when it first kicks on, it might only be running at five or 10% of its maximum capacity. And the benefit to this is that when it first kicks on, it's going to ramp up and down along a continuum similar to how a car motor works, right? When you hop in your car, your car doesn't go zero or 60 miles an hour. It goes zero to 60 miles an hour. And that's what makes for a nice, smooth, comfortable ride where you can accelerate slowly and ramp up until you get to the desired speed you need. And then you stay there until you get off the highway and then you slow down gradually. And you would think this is how air condition, you know, it would make sense that this is how heat pumps and air conditioners function. But unfortunately, a lot of the technology that's still out there is all your basic single stage or multi-stage products. And the reason that we recommend inverters in certain applications, not all the time, and I'll talk about the specific applications where we advise against it and just want you to really stick with a single stage system is because inverters, number one, they have the biggest benefit that you get with an inverter is that it's quieter. When it first starts off from a comfort aspect, it's going to ramp up and it barely kicks on. You barely hear air coming out of the vents. So as a result, it's much more comfortable simply because it's quieter. In addition to this, because it actually runs longer, when it first kicks on, it gently circulating air through the home and then it might take 10 or 15 minutes before it actually ramps up to 50 or 100% capacity. The benefit of an inverter is that it's number one going to be pulling less power on startup. So it's going to be more efficient. And then in addition to being more efficient when it's running, which means that it's going to save you money on the energy bill, it's also going to be more comfortable because you get longer run times. I'll explain how you get comfort from longer run times, but the bottom line is that in a single stage application, oftentimes, and this is especially true for oversized systems. So if you put in a AC that is too big for your home or a heater that is too big for your home, when it first kicks on, it'll heat up very quick or cool down very quick. And you might think, oh, this is great, except for what will often happen is you have hot spots and cold spots throughout the house. And typically those hot spots are going to be the vents that are closest to the furnace or the heater. And the cold spots, you know, the other spots where there's going to be a big temperature differential is going to be the furthest duct runs from the system. So the ducts that are maybe the bedroom on the other side of the house that's furthest away from the furnace or from the air handler, those rooms are going to suffer because the rest of the home satisfies temperature 
very quickly while those furthest duct runs don't quite get the airflow that they need for an extended period of time. And this is where inverters create more comfort through longer run times because what happens is you get more airflow circulating throughout the home. And so even though certain parts of the home don't blast with that cold air in the case of cooling or warm air in the case of heating, and they kind of gradually ramp, that creates an environment where you have less hot pockets and cold pockets throughout the home, which means that you have a more even feeling temperature throughout the home. Now, a common question that we get asked is, doesn't that mean that this isn't going to be as efficient and it's not gonna save us as, as much money because it's running all the time? And the truth is, on average, our inverter systems when compared to a single stage system is going to save anywhere between 30 and 40% in terms of its actual consumption of electricity by comparison. The reason that this is the case is because number one, they pull less power on startup. And number two, they're not running at 100% capacity the entire time they're on. When they first kick on, let's say, you're heating and you have the thermostat set at 70 degrees and you're trying to get up to 75 degrees or vice versa at 70 degrees and you're trying to cool it down from 75 degrees, it's going to ramp up gradually and then it might stay at 100% capacity for, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then it's gonna modulate down to 80% capacity or 70% capacity. And so although you get longer run times, you get longer run times at more efficient energy settings where it's pulling the least amount of power compared to the output of cooling. And that's how those systems are designed to provide maximum comfort and maximum efficiency and therefore savings. Now, in addition to standard heat pumps uh, versus inverter heat pumps, there's another type of heat pump that's called a dual fuel heat pump. And all this is, is really, this is just the air handler that's paired with a heat pump, right? So if you pair an air handler with an electric backup heat kit, that is not a dual fuel system because you basically have your backup heat is still electric. Dual fuel for the purpose of what we're talking about in a heat pump application is when a heat pump is paired with a furnace. And the reason that these work well in colder climates is that let's say your heat pump runs efficiently all the way down to five degrees Fahrenheit. On the cold nights, when it gets below five degrees Fahrenheit, your furnace might kick in instead in order to satisfy temperature on the thermostat and maintain comfort throughout the home. So a dual fuel application is great for very cold climates. So if you happen to live in Northern Wisconsin or someplace where it's very, very cold, Oftentimes we're recommending dual fuel heat pumps just because they give you that added benefit of having a backup furnace for those really cold nights, but you still get to benefit from the savings and the comfort of having a high efficiency heat pump running as your primary heat source the rest of the year. Now, if you happen to live in a very hot climate, you might be thinking, eh, I don't need the most efficient heat pump because I'm primarily concerned with cooling. The truth is that you are concerned with getting the most efficient heat pump, especially in hot climates in places like Phoenix, or maybe you live in Houston, Texas, and that you know heat pump is running nine months out of the year in cooling mode. And that's what people, a lot of people don't realize is that your heat pump is actually just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. And so your heat pump is functioning for both your heating as well as your air conditioning. So if you are in a warmer climate, like in Phoenix, people don't run their heater that much in the winter, maybe a few weeks or maybe a couple months out of the year, uh, depending on how warm you like it or how sensitive you are. But I know when I visit my in-laws out there, there, they rarely kick on their furnace because it's pretty comfortable and pretty nice and pretty moderate in the winter in terms of the low temperatures. It doesn't actually get that cold that often. And so your heat pump is going to keep up year round in these types of environments. But when your air conditioning bill comes in the summer, if you have a high efficiency heat pump, remember your heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. You want that high efficiency air conditioning running. And since your heat pump condenser is really just your air conditioner in the summer, having a high efficiency system, even in a a warmer climate where you're not going to be using it as a heat pump that often still makes a lot of financial sense and you're definitely going to see those savings in terms of both efficiency savings as well as just the added benefit of all the comfort that you get from having a quiet inverter driven system. Now although inverters are quieter and more efficient than their single stage counterparts there's still areas where it might make sense to get a single stage system and oftentimes when we recommend single stage systems are going to be number one for rental properties and this is obvious this is because your tenant are not going to take good care of high efficiency equipment. So there's no sense in spending a lot of money putting in the most efficient equipment that you can because they're going to run it into the ground anyways. And so you want something that's reliable, bulletproof, durable, and built to last through hot summers. And single stage equipment, it's cheaper to install, it's cheaper to maintain. And most of the parts that are available for a single
single stage system or that fail and these are going to be things like capacitors or condenser fan motors are things that we tend to stock on our trucks in the summer there are exceptions for where you want an oem you know part and so we don't always have the part we need but the bottom line is a single stage system we are more likely to have those parts that we need to fix equipment in the summer on the spot which when you're dealing with a rental property type of situation that's what you want you want something that's easy to repair easier to repair quickly and there's a lot of interchangeable parts on those and it's also something that you because this is an investment property you want something that's going to be reliable for your tenants and cheap to maintain and there's one last thing i want to talk about when it comes to heat pumps before we do that if you haven't done so already please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already it is a free way that you can support the channel if you found this content helpful and it is much appreciated and let us know what you think in the comment section below or what questions you still have about inverter heat pumps versus standard heat pumps we're here to answer those questions we always try to put out content that's relevant and so we do read and respond to those comments so that being said thanks in advance for taking the time to post a comment and the last thing i want to talk about for anyone that's buying a heat pump for the first time that may not be familiar with how they operate is what's called the defrost cycle. Now, one thing that I mentioned earlier is that a heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. What the reversing valve does is it reverses the flow of refrigerant and this reversal of the flow of refrigerant is what turns the system from an air conditioner to a heater and a heater back to an air conditioner, depending on how the system is calling for heat or whether the system is calling for cooling. Now, Heat pumps have a unique feature in that because they are pulling heat of the outdoor atmosphere, even when it might be zero degrees outside and very cold, there's still actually heat energy that can be extracted from the air. This is how cold climate heat pumps work. As a result, one of the things that heat pumps have in cold climates is what's called a defrost cycle. Now, a defrost cycle means that as frost builds up on the outside condenser, once it gets so thick that air can no longer pass through the fins, the system will actually shut off the fan and do what's called a defrost cycle, which reverses the flow of refrigerant, essentially sending it into air conditioning mode. It normally turns off the fan inside your house, so you don't have cold air blowing in your house in the winter. But what it's doing while it's reversing the flow of refrigerant is it's actually sending hot refrigerant through the condenser outside, and it's melting all the frost off of the condenser outside. And that's why heat pumps are normally installed on heat pump stands, depending on the region and depending on how cold it gets. And that's so they can drop their ice because the ice will actually hang off the bottom of the heat pump and then eventually break and fall and you'll see a puddle of ice underneath your heat pump and the reason i point this out is because oftentimes when we install a heat pump for someone that's never had it if we don't make sure that we explain this in the installation process they might be caught off guard because what happens is the fan will shut off in the middle of the night and they'll say hey it's calling for heat but it's not running right now what's going on that is perfectly normal operation for all heat pumps the defrost cycle is going to vary based on the outdoor humidity and how quickly that frost is building up, how cold it is outside. For example, if it's colder and it's snowing and therefore it's a higher humidity and there's more moisture, that frost will build up quicker and you might have more often defrost cycles or defrost cycles that are happening at a higher frequency and that's perfectly normal. But if it's really dry out and or a more moderate temperature, you might not get a lot of frost buildup and therefore you'll get longer heat pump run times before it switches and goes into a defrost cycle. And if you have happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So I hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. So make sure you check these videos out if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.